أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أبدى الأفلاك والأرضين والصلاة والسلام على من كان نبيا وآدم بين الماء والطين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وعلى اصحابه وبارك وسلم الصلاه والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاه والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاه والسلام عليك يا رحمه للعالمين وعلى اله واصحابك يا شفيع المرتدين my dear and honorable respected elders and brothers mothers and sisters in islam and innocent youth assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh all praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, cherisher and sustainer of the universe and choices, blessings and salutations upon his beloved Rasul, Huzuri Purnur, Hazrat Ahmed Mujtaba, Muhammad Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, in the previous um, parts of the series, um, we have discussed the various segments of the Yaru Sharif and thus far we have uh, completed with five segments of the recitation and the understanding of the Gyaru Sharif, which is normally recited here in our different congregations. And we ended off speaking uh, in segment um, five about Wa in min shayin illa yusabbihu bihamdihi wa la killa tafqahuna tasbihahum that everything makes the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything makes the dhikr of Allah, but we do not comprehend we do not understand the tasbih and we we continued through the various types of tasbih the different ways in which we make the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the different ways in which we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and um, how this glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a form of expressing thanks and shukr and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's magnificent favors and an'am upon us and for everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does for us and how how grateful we are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favors, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's boons, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's bounties upon us because whatever we have, whatever we are, whatever we are blessed with is through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ultimate razik, the ultimate provider, the ultimate razak is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we say um, in this tasbih, in this segment, we express our shukr and our thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by making the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now when we have glorified Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have shown our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have expressed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how grateful we are for these Favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the an'am and the ni'am. Ni'am is the complete favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. All of it combined. We are so grateful for this. Now that we have completed this, this segment and the section of the kitab of the Garishti book. Where we have expressed our glorification and our thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we come and we appeal to the lutuf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is where segment 6 starts. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى الله لطيف بعباده يرزق من يشاء وهو القوي العزيز الله لطيف that Allah is لطيف okay what is the meaning of لطيف this this اسم عظم of Allah this صفت of Allah سبحانه وتعالى of لطف لطف means to be kind لطف means to be gentle لطف means to be affectionate Lut means to be loving, it means to bestow, it means to, to favor, it means to alleviate, it means to calm, it means to ease, it means to soothe. Okay, so when, when we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allahu Latif, we are in fact saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most kind, we are saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most gentle, we are saying Allah is most. Loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most affectionate when we say Allah Latif. We are saying that Allah alleviates problems. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eases problems. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soothes problems. Allah bestows and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favors. Subhanallah. 
How beautiful it is. One, one sifat, one ismi adam of Allah. Latif, the sifat of lutf, means so many beautiful things. Okay? And this is, this, this one sifat explains so much of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. But now, that is not the end. This is just the start of the ayat. The ayat says, Allahu latif bi'ibadihi. Now we say, we first said, Allahu latif. Allah, Allah is uh, merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kind, Allah is gentle, Allah is loving, Allah bestows. We said all that. Now we add bi'ibadihi. What does it mean? With his servants. So now it is, Allah is latif with his servants. Allah is kind with his servants. Allah is gentle with his servants. Allah is most loving with his servants. Who? Us, the Ummati of Rasulullah, the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, Allah uh, 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 bestows favors upon his servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 favors his servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviates the issues of his servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soothes his servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calms them down. Allahu Akbar, subhanallah. So we say, Allahu Latifum, and this is what we should bear in mind when we come to this segment in the Giyadu Sharif. We say, Allahu Latif, bi'ibadihi. First Allah is Latif, then Allah is bi'ibadihi, with, Latif with us. Yarzuqu man yasha. If you, know, if you want some more, Yarzuqu man yasha. Subhanallah. And Allah grants sustenance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants rizq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants provisions to his servants whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to grant rizq to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants provisions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants rizq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants sustenance to all of them, to everyone, to everyone, humans, to, to, to animals, to everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants this rizq. Now, we might ask ourselves, what is the definition of rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is rizq? I mean, when we say that, you know, may Allah increase our sustenance, may Allah increase our rizq, many of the times, or in our, in our uh, understanding sometimes, sometimes our understanding is, is, is a bit limited and we, we are the ones who, um, who, uh, who accept the rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or we, we, we are the ones who categorize the risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be money only, you know, in monetary form. Okay, we are the ones who limit the risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be in monetary form only and the, the money that we earn and the food that we eat, um, which we buy with the money that we have earned, uh, we say this is a risk. Alhamdulillah, this is a risk from Allah. But the risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only money and food, but Risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings upon us. The risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's um, favors upon us. The risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is anything which nourishes us. So nourishment is a risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say that about Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, that her love nourished me, or I was nourished by her love. So the love of Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was nourishment for Rasulullah. That was a type of uh, provision from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So the love of a spouse is rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dua of the mother is rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I know that my mother makes dua for me. That dua of my mother for me is rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that dua ul ummi li waladiha ka dua'in nabi li ummati or kama qal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the dua of a mother for the child is like the dua of a nabi for his ummah. Subhanallah. The dua of a mother for the child is like the mother of a uh, is like the dua of a nabi for his ummah. So if my mother makes dua for me, that is a risk from Allah. If my father makes dua for me, that is a risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My mother's love or your mother's love for you is nourishment for you. Okay? Uh, because this is all different types of risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if I know and if I understand that my mother loves me, and if I understand that, um, that my mother or my parents make dua for me, then I offer my gratitude 
and my shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this bounty and this rizq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted me. Tranquility of the soul is rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tranquility of the mind, tranquility of the soul. I mean, what a beautiful um, form of sustenance and rizq it is that when you can go to bed in the evening with an absolutely clear mind without any worry without any stress or anything like that so that comes from a different risk from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the tranquility of the mind the tranquility of the soul the heart is at soul because the heart has not uh, transgressed the boundaries of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the purity of the heart is also a, a a form of risk a form of sustenance from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep your heart free from malice to keep your heart free or for a heart to be free from 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 jealousy from enmity from hatred that when you can go sleep in the evening without having ill feelings or bad thoughts about any person in your life allah but that is a beautiful risk a beautiful form of risk from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you have that purity of the heart and the purity of intention sometimes you may be misunderstood because you cannot express yourself in a proper way but your intentions are good your intentions are sincere everybody don't always understand what it is that you're setting out to do or that you wish to accomplish but once you once you have that purity of the heart once you have the purity of the intention and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a way of the purity of your heart and the purity of your intention that is an immense risk from from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that purity may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clean our hearts from 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 evil clean our hearts from jealousy malice and hatred towards other people healthiness of the body i mean when we are healthy allah but it is such a great risk from allah i i, I ran into a brother he told me he's 73 years old i think he said 72 or 73 73 years old alhamdulillah all healthy when i when he told me his age first of all i could not believe him i said subhanallah 73 and he says you know what i only take two tablets per day all right and one is a um i think he said it was a, a vitamin c tablet and the other one was a uh um uh, immune booster or something like that but nothing else and i told him alhamdulillah you know, this besides this being a ni'mat, a great favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you, this is also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's a beautiful form of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rizq upon you. So we make shukr for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him a, a long health filled with the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a good health. And all those who are sick, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, grant them shifa, inshallah, just this morning calls were coming in about people who are not doing too well and people might having to be admitted to hospital etc and and you hear about it all the time in your communities you know brothers and sisters in hospital and um we make dua that may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them uh, shifa kamila inshallah for all our sick may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them speedy recovery inshallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect everybody from uh, covid 19 inshallah and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate the problems of everybody, whatever you, you might be going through, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for everybody, inshallah. So we are speaking about the different type of risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the healthiness of the body, um, uh, the soundness of the heart, the soundness of thought when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you this, this is an immense risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, the care of a father if you've got a parent a father taking care of you concerned about your well-being etc that is a risk from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the uh, the presence of a brother you know you 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 in a problem you're in a situation and and your brother is always there that you can turn to him um uh, or even the kindness of a friend you know you speak to your friends and um and the advice and the support and you, that you get from them all this is risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, the laughter of a child subhanallah the laughter of a daughter uh, the laughter of a, a an innocent child that is enough to 
to put such a beautiful smile on your face when 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 your ch when your children are happy and when your children are running through the house and they they laughing and smiling and 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 going on alhamdulillah that is a beautiful form of rizq from allah when this happens make shukr to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you hear your child laugh make shukr to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are other people in the position where their children are not able to laugh their children might be sick or the children have passed on and they miss the children thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what you have thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you because as I said previously la in shakartum la azidannakum la in shakartum la azidannakum Allah says thank me and I will give you more la in shakartum la azidannakum la azidannakum thank me be, be grateful to me show your gratitude to me I will increase you in your bounties I will increase you in my in my favors towards you Allahu Akbar so this is a risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, 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 the kindness of the friend, the, 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 the comfort of a spouse, the love from your wife, the love from your husband, the love from your children, the love from your parents. All this is risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dua of someone who loves you purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe there's no family relation even, but you are loved purely for the sake of of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the dua of that person is a risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the dua of any person who makes dua for you without informing you I mean you don't even know that person is making dua for you but they the other side of the world or miles away kilometers away or even right next door that person is raising his hands or her hands and making dua to you in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your well-being for your health for your Hidayat for the forgiveness of your sins. Allahu Akbar. This is a risk from Allah. And when you make dua for people in such a way, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that he who makes dua for the next person, without that person's knowledge, the angels say Ameen to that dua. And the angels say, Ya Allah, grant to the maker of this dua what he is asking for the next person. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So let us remember people in our duas. Let us make duas for everybody. Let us not be selfish. Let us not limit our duas just to 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 uh, to our close circles, you know, or to our families. Let us, yeah, make dua for everybody, inshallah. So, so this is a risk from Allah subhanahu wa taala. Um, so we're speaking about Allah Latifun bi ibadi yarzuku ma yasha. And you know, we, we covering this ayat of um, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's risk and how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is latif. But the risk from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, I want us to understand that risk from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala comes in many forms, and we should take cognizance of this fact. We should be aware of this, and we must understand when certain things happen in our lives and when we go through certain situations or when we experience as what I just explained now as far as you know uh, the dua of the mother uh, the care of the brother or the, the, the sukoon of the qalb um, the laughter of the child these and um, you know we must understand that these are different form of risk from Allah and once we understand that we make shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, 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 is more than that. Allah Akbar. It's, it's much more than I can ever explain. Allah Akbar than anybody can ever explain. Even the tests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us through, the tests that we are subjected to on a, on a personal level, on, on a spiritual level, on an uh, emotional level, what, uh, financial level, whatever levels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us on and this the imtihanat and this azmaish and this this uh, this uh, situations, this test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us through, this is also a risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because these tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to grow. Okay? It helps us to develop. It helps us to to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because naturally when you're in a tough spot when you're in a tough situation and you're struggling this is when you when you come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is when you speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more this is when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better this is when you spend more time in the consciousness and in the dhikr and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so so for example now okay um how uh, how it is a test to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you find yourself in this difficult situation and now uh, at the start of the situation you are anxious you are filled with anxiety you are filled with stress 
and worry and you find that um, because you are worried maybe um, um, you cannot sleep at night you know you, you you're worried about what is going to happen and will I be okay will I be able to see to that will I be able to see to this and etc and you know I've got my family to take care of and I got you know the bond and the rent or the, well, whatever you know and payments that I've got to make you know you, you you worry about all these things and 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 you're terrified sometimes of the uncertainty and 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 even though you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but, but sometimes what happens is shaitan enters the picture, all right? Shaitan comes into the fray and, and he messes with your mind, all right? He, 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 he causes further turmoil and havoc in your mind. It's like shaitan takes your, your mind and he, he wraps it in a bag and he, he runs away with it, you know? And, 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 and you are trying to pull yourself back. You are trying to, to, to pull the rope back and and take control of this uh, of your own uh, emotional being and your own state and and you find it difficult because this is what shaitan is doing and, he's, and, and the thoughts that's entering your mind you know and and you're losing your your it's not that you're losing but your levels of tawakkul and your faith in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is becoming lesser okay your, your level of iman is also become lesser this is a test from allah but this is a risk also from allah because during this time you will learn and you will learn how to come closer to allah and 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 you know when you are faced with this um with this uh, uh attack from shaitan when he causes havoc in your mind and you try to reel your mind back and your senses back so that shaitan doesn't cause all that the, the, the confusion in your state of your mind and what did the salihin used to say recite this ayat from the glorious quran sharif rabbi a'udhu bika min hamazati shayateen wa a'udhu bika rabbi ayyahdurun my lord ya allah i seek refuge with you from the whisperings of the shaitan I mean shayateen from the whisperings of all the shayateen and I seek refuge with you, Ya Allah, lest they should come near me. All right, so Rabbi, a'udhu bika min hamazati shayateen wa a'udhu bika Rabbi ayyahdurun. Read this dua, this ayat from the Quran Sharif three times in the morning, inshallah. Start with durood three times, read this three times and end off with durood three times in the morning and in the evening. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save you from the whisperings of shaitan and when you find yourself in situations where shaitan is messing with you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you this ayat is in uh, surah 23 surah mu'minun um, ayat number 97 and 98 so now you find yourself in the situation and now what do you do you don't do nothing. You make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, grant me strength. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, help me. So when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for strength, Allah don't give you muscles. <laughs> Allah don't give you muscles. Allah provides you with the people. Allah provides you with the situation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides you with the obstacles for you to endure and become stronger. So when you ask Allah for strength, you don't just get muscles, you don't become strong overnight, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts you in a situation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts people in your way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put those obstacles there that you will have to endure. You have to go through a period of time where you will have to endure this. Okay. And when you endure this and when you come out on the other side, you come out stronger. This is a risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sabr, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for patience, you have to practice that patience. You know, Allah don't give you patience just like that. And something, maybe you are fortunate, alhamdulillah, we, we make dua that when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sabr, then Allah must grant us sabr. But what Allah does is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the situation for us to develop our sabr. So if we ask Allah, Ya Allah, grant me patience, grant us sabr, you'll find that when you go to the bank, Allah will put you in a long queue. <laughs> <laughs> you, you'll find Allah, Allah gives you a cue at the bank. So this is your test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is how you, you get stronger. But continue to plead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. Assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is near. And then you will find yourself slowly, slowly, as you are enduring whatever situation you find yourself in and the problem that you're going through as you find yourself enduring you will find yourself getting stronger you will find yourself getting braver you will find that you 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 you, you sleep better in the evening you will find that your anxiety levels will drop you will you know you will become stronger alhamdulillah 
this test is also a risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So, you know, we're speaking about the different types of risk. When you find yourself in Madinah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or you find yourself in Makkah to Mukarramah, all right, before, standing before the most beautiful and the most glorious Kaaba Sharif in Makkah to Mukarramah, or you find yourself standing outside the Rauda of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you're looking at the beautiful green dome of the Prophet ﷺ. Or you find yourself standing inside Masjid al-Dambawi, inside the mosque of Rasulullah. And you're standing facing the Mawajah Sharif of Rasulullah. You're facing the Prophet ﷺ. And at that time, tears roll down your cheek. Allahu Akbar. Tears roll down your cheek or you find yourself crying, those tears that roll down your cheeks, those tears are risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That too is provision and risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you the ability to shed tears in love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in, Mac- in Medina, or to shed tears in love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Makkah al-Mukarramah in front of the glorious Kaaba, or to shed tears because you love the Kaaba, or to shed tears because you are thankful and grateful that Allah has brought you to Makkah al-Mukarramah and Allah has brought you to Madinah al-Munawwara. That is a rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or when you hear verses of the Quran Sharif being recited, Allah Akbar, and you cry, or you heard, you hear the praises of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam being recited in the form of the Naat Sharif, and tears fall down your cheeks, Allahu Akbar. Or you hear a beautiful and emotional lecture which brings out a tear or two, Allahu Akbar. Make shukr to Allah subhanahu wa taala because this is a risk from Allah subhanahu wa taala. And there are many people who unfortunately cannot cannot cry at a time like this, Allah Akbar. They cannot cry at a time like this. They cannot. It's not that they don't love, they have the love, Allahu Akbar. But the heart, unfortunately, is sometimes hard. They have not been granted the softness of the heart, Allahu Akbar. It is said in Arabic, and in the lines of what I'm going to say now, what I'm going to recite now, in the lines of this, there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also, but it is said that, Jumud al min qaswat al qalb. Okay? Jumud al min qaswat al qalb. The drying of the tears, Jumud al the drying of the tears or the drying of the eyes, min qaswat al qalb. It is because of the hardness of the heart. The heart has become hard, and that is why the tears have dried up. Wa qaswat al qalb min kathrat al dhunub. And the reason for the hardness of the heart is because of the increase of sin. We sin more. We sin more. And when we sin more, the heart becomes hard. And we sin more. We sin more frequently. Why? Because we have forgotten death. We do not think about death a lot. We have forgotten that our time for death is going to come. Whenever there is a janaza, the lessons that we are supposed to take from that janaza, do we take it from that janaza? Is it an ibrah? Is it a lesson for us? Allah Akbar. So, kathratu dhunub wa kathratu dhunub bin nisyan al maut. And the increasing of sins is because we have forgotten death. Wa nisyan al maut min tulil amal. And we have forgotten death. Why? Min tulil amal. Because our hopes are long and our expectations are great. We have great hope, expectations about our futures and about our lives. And we have these long hopes and wishes and dreams. And that is why we have forgotten death. Nisyan al maut from is because of Tulil Amr. Wa Tulil Amr min Wa Tulil Amal min Shiddatil Hars. And the reason why we have these great expectations and these long 
hopes and dreams and armans is because shiddatil hars hars is because the intensifying of greed we have become more greedy we want more we want more we we just want all the time shiddatil hars wa shiddatil hars min hubb al dunya and why are we why has our greed intensified min hubb al dunya because we love this dunya because we have fallen in love with this dunya and we think this dunya is everything and we forgotten about the year after wa hubb wa hubb al dunya ra's kull khati'ah and the love for this dunya the love for this world is the the foremost on the list of vices ra's kull kull khati'ah it is it is tops it is top of the list of all the vices what is it love for this dunya so this my dear brothers and sisters in islam is what we should be bearing in mind when we are reciting allahu latifun bi ibadihi yarzuqu may yasha how allah is latif upon us and the risk that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is granting us and we are appealing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying ya latif ya latif ya allahu ya latif ya latif ultuf binahi ya ilahi kullana يا لطيف يا لطيف بالعباد انت القصد والمراد انك لطيف انك لطيف لم تزل التف بنا والمسلمين all these duas that we are making to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is we are crying out to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are appealing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his lutf we are appealing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's gentleness allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's affection upon us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's kindness towards us for allah to ease us to allah for allah to soothe us for allah to alleviate our issues for allah to bestow his favors upon us allahu akbar allahu akbar so this is this is latif this is latif we are still in segment 6 but we will end off inshallah with this and we will address segment 6 further when we speak about the qualities of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of al hanan and al manan when we say ya hanan ya manan thabbitna ala al iman ya hanan ya manan man alayna bil ghufran so this section was mainly about the lutuf of, of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to understand have this understanding have this appreciation when we recite the ayat of allah latifun bi ibadi yarzuqu may yasha wa huwa al qawi al aziz and when we call on to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat of lutf ya latif wa ya latif and it does not only limit this uh, calling on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ism azam on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names to the garbi sharif o a any specific or particular dhikr but when we make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on our musallas or when we are just sitting and talking to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then invoke allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by you know by calling allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's majestic and beautiful names inshallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide and protect us inshallah we will continue uh, with segment 6 inshallah in part 5 of the series inshallah wa akhiru dawana an alhamdulillahirabbil alamin والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته